They asked me the other day on television, you, you, you're trying to break up the black Jewish relationship. I said, you're right, I'm going to break it up. What? I didn't finish. I said, what relationship are you talking about? We've had a relationship since Hyman Levy. Jesse used that word. Did you know that a Jewish man named Hyman Levy, when they were brought, when they came to the New World, they used to live in New Amsterdam called New York, and Peter Stuyvesant, who was the governor at that time, would not let Jews take part in the economy. So the Jews imported beads and other worthless trinkets from Holland and began selling them to the Indians in exchange for per, uh, uh, um, fur pelts. They sold the fur pelts and they accumulated enough money to set up rum shops and whiskey shops in Newport, Rhode Island and New York. They never tell you that in that day some of the biggest slave merchants were Jews. The owners of the slave ships were Jews. They were then masters of the channels of distribution. From that time we've had a relationship. <laughs> On friendly terms of course. You and they, they own the house, you clean it. They buy the food, you cook it. They own the property, you rent it. They got the store, you buy from them. You got the talent, they're the agent and the manager. You can sing, they the record promoter. The record distributor, the record owner. You got the acting talent, they're the producer and the owner of the movie. It's been a relationship, all right. They're friendly because it's a master slave relationship. We don't want that kind of relationship. We want a relationship on equitable and just terms. So the old relationship has to break up. The relationship of us to the government has to break up and a new relationship form. Because our time of servitude to white people is over and God wants the black man to come up into his own. For God has a duty for you. So he makes a man from dust. I know you don't know much about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I know that you thought many things about that man. And we dismissed him. Oh, he had a school and he had a newspaper plant and this business and that business and these farms. Everything that he did, he tried to get next to you. You know, all the while Jesus was among the people. They didn't understand him. Thank God for Paul. Hmm. Amen. Amen. Paul brought Jesus home to the people. <laughs> Beloved, look, I am his student. Without Elijah Muhammad, I would be what I was. I was a wonderful musician. I loved you so very much, but I didn't know what to do for you. Thanks to Elijah Muhammad, he taught me how to give life to a people who are dead. I had to find a way to get to you. Because as long as there was this Muslim-Christian battle, 
where Muslims are condemning Christians and Christians condemning Muslims, where there's always this polemic, where Christians have to always feel they got to defend their faith, uh -huh. Uh -huh. then we could never sit down and reason together. I don't want to fight. I want us to reason. So as a student of Elijah Muhammad, I had to try to develop a method mm -hmm. that would allow me the chance to sit with you, my Christian brothers and sisters. You got the right word. You need a deeper understanding of the right word because the word once exploded you got enough energy to pull right up. And believe me, as the brother was singing the song, no, the sister was singing, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. See, when you really understand that, we move. Jesus turned water into wine. Jesus wasn't making folk drunk. I mean, I know you'd be happy if he came to your wedding and put his hand over some water and turn it into wine and no. all of us would be so lit, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's not what it's talking about. You got the Word of God, it's in your hand, it's powerful. All right, sir. Yes, sir. But as long as you don't have understanding of the Word, it is a dead letter scripture. It's water, but it can't give you the Spirit. But when Jesus came to the wedding and they didn't have any wine, wedding only means he come to unite people. He's tired of seeing division, hatred of family members for one another. He wants to pull the family together so that in him there would be one faith, one Lord, one baptism. No division. So he takes dead letter scripture uh -huh. and puts his hand on it yeah. and makes it live. So when you get it, you feel fired up. Ready now. Yes, yes. I met Jesus. All right. I'm not talking about a man I don't know. And if you know Jesus, you can do what the Master did. When I speak as God, I'm not saying this out of arrogance, but when I speak, the words open your eyes. The words open your ears. The words unstop your tongue. The words make you get up with no fear of your master. The word will put your hands to work and your feet to walk in the right path because it got life in it. And because I dared to love you, Dead to love my brother Jesse. It was love that got me in trouble. Some people think that I was climbing up on Jesse's back just to get in front of a TV camera. Don't charge me with your evil. Because I know TV can't make me. If God make a man, what he need television for? <laughs> television can only enhance what God made. No. I met Jesse in a time of love. I'm not interested in politics. I know that the politics of this world is worth nothing. It's an instrument that we use to get where we're going, but I wouldn't put faith in it. No. 
Not if you know Christ. But I saw Jesse about to be killed because he's a black man in a society that fears genetic annihilation. How dare this black man stand up and dare to be president? He dared so strong that many white people wanted to back him up. I saw them threatening his life. You don't understand me. You really don't. You don't understand love. Because if you understood love, you would know why I had to walk with Jesse. Right. 